Welcome everyone. In this video, we will be talking about risk management standard or ISO 31000. Some uh, important definitions to start with uh, the difference between uh, project, which is a temporary endeavor, and operations that refers to repetitive uh, activities to produce a service or product. In terms of uh, risks uh, and the terminology, uh, we have uncertainty that refers to uh, lack of information or shortage of knowledge uh, about the phenomena and uh, risk or risk uh, scenario uh, is uh, when uh, the situation comes to fruition. An example in here, uh, we are uncertain uh, and have a shortage of knowledge about uh, availability of uh, resources in a project and this might uh, trigger uh, the risk of uh, delays for the project or late completions. The question comes to mind uh, why uh, uh, we should focus on risk management. There uh, have been many instances of uh, corporate collapses uh, in the world. Uh, a recent example in Australia was the retail giant uh, Dick Smith. And uh, we have also heard about uh, FTX, uh, which was active in the uh, cryptocurrency market. Other uh, uh, risk uh, scenarios such as uh, natural disasters and uh, more recently uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, uh, and the consequences of these uh, risks uh, shows us um, uh, that uh, risk management is uh, a very important um, concept to focus on. There are two main elements uh, when looking at uh, any risk uh, scenario, probability or likelihood is uh, the first one uh, and uh, we have the consequence or impact. An example in here, uh, there is a 50% chance of heavy showers resulting in uh, floods. So we have uh, the element of uh, chance or probability and uh, the consequence. Risk management standard uh, was um, first established and published in 2009 with a revision in 2018. Uh, the very favorable uh, property of this standard is the systematic and structured approach it has for identification, assessment, uh, treating, and monitoring uh, risks. It is uh, based on uh, principles of risk management, uh, including creation of value, uh, integrating into processes, uh, being uh, structured and comprehensive, uh, and uh, inclusive uh, approach that uh, involves all relevant stakeholders and also uh, the standard is very dynamic and uh, it can be used in response to changes into internal and external environment. Here uh, is a diagram uh, of uh, uh, the procedural approach in uh, ISO 31000 which starts with establishing the context followed by risk identification, risk analysis, uh, risk evaluation, and uh, risk treatment. Uh, monitoring and review, and also communication and consultation with the stakeholders or uh, other important uh, pillars of uh, this standard. The first step focuses on establishing the risk context to understand what is uh, the appropriate level of uh, risk tolerance uh, for an individual or organization and also definition of roles and uh, responsibility. Here is an example uh, which uh, defines uh, risk uh, tolerances um, and uh, you can see in the first column uh, on the risk level uh, we have very high uh, to low uh, levels in here. Uh, in a very high uh, level of risk, uh, it is obviously not acceptable and uh, it uh, creates a large or severe impact uh, 
for the related activity and it should be seized uh, immediately. On the very low uh, end of this spectrum, uh, we have uh, an acceptable uh, uh, risk level which is tolerable and uh, there is uh, uh, no required treatment strategy uh, that needs to be implemented. Uh, it needs to be uh, still uh, periodically monitored to ensure that uh, uh, no changes in the situation is likely to happen. The second step under establishing the risk context is to define roles and responsibilities. Here is an example uh, uh, that uh, shows uh, the hierarchy of the roles, starting from uh, chief executive, uh, which uh, has very high level responsibilities to maintain a culture of risk awareness. And then it um, comes uh, to executive and senior uh, management uh, responsibilities to nominate uh, uh, risk assessment facilitators uh, or RAFs. And for those facilitators, we have uh, responsibilities such as, um, you know, reporting uh, uh, their area of responsibility, and it can be weekly, monthly, or quarterly report. And for every project team, uh, we have uh, the responsibility of supporting and reporting to RAPS. Of course, this is an example, and for different organizations, this can uh, differ. Back to our uh, procedural approach, uh, the next step is uh, to identify the risks, and uh, we need to uh, be aware of critical project objectives and identify the threats on those objectives and formulate risk scenarios. Here we have three uh, examples. Uh, in the first one, for example, increasing the cost of steel rebars may prevent the foundation stage of the project to be completed within uh, the specified budget. The second one is obviously uh, safety. Uh, breaches and risks, and the third uh, risk scenario is uh, related to quality of the project. The third uh, step, uh, which is risk analysis, we need to uh, we need to determine the likelihood of uh, uh, risks and also uh, impact. In terms of uh, likelihood, uh, we can consider. Uh, you know, probabilities in different um, ranges uh, and use descriptive uh, ratings such as rare, unlikely, possible, likely, and highly likely for them. And uh, on their impact, uh, we can again use verbal uh, descriptors such as very severe, severe, moderate, minor, and uh, negligible to identify the impact. To our uh, procedural approach, the next uh, or fourth step is evaluation of risks. And here uh, we need to determine and also prioritize risks and also uh, create a risk register for communication to project stakeholders. For uh, risk uh, prioritization, uh, sometimes uh, a risk matrix uh, or uh, a uh, fever diagram is used, uh, which is color-coded uh, most often. Uh, in this example, we can see a 7x7 seven seven, uh, risk matrix. Uh, depending on uh, the need of organization, it can be 3x3, uh, 7x7, three seven seven, or higher uh, dimensions. As you can see, the color coding uh, is uh, uh, subjective uh, to uh, the need of the organization. In here, uh, we have uh, low uh, priorities, um, uh, color-coded by green, uh, moving to medium, yellow, uh, and orange. And also, we have high and very high uh, priority for risks, uh, using warmer tones of uh, color right, uh, like red. Risk is a uh, uh, obviously a function of uh, likelihood and uh, impact. 
The next uh, uh, step uh, on the uh, risk evaluation is to formulate a risk register and uh, it has uh, some standard uh, components necessary for communication to project stakeholders. Here is an example uh, on the left hand side of this risk, risk register we have risk identification analysis in the middle and risk management steps on the right hand side. It is now populated uh, with uh, uh, data and uh, as you can see uh, this is relevant to an environmental uh, risk before uh, uh, the risk treatment um, uh, we have the data and also post uh, mitigation or treatment uh, uh, it has been recorded in this uh, uh, register and uh, finally step five uh, which is risk treatment uh, there are several strategies of acceptance uh, avoidance mitigation or uh, transfer that can be adopted acceptance or uh, retention of the risk uh, refers to the situation that uh, uh, the risk is tolerable and uh, uh, no further action is uh, required to reduce it and uh, the management uh, should um, approve uh, such a treatment strategy to accept the risks. Avoidance is another uh, strategy. We have an example in here. Uh, we can seize any online payment transactions uh, to avoid the risk of uh, uh, hackers and uh, online attackers uh, to make uh, fraudulent uh, payments. Sometimes it may seem uh, extreme, uh, but um, if uh, the risk is not tolerable, uh, this uh, strategy for treatment is advisable. Risk reduction is uh, another uh, treatment strategy and the example uh, we have in here is to implementation of a firewall uh, to uh, reduce uh, system communication with uh, malicious uh, external servers. Risk transfer uh, usually refers to uh, uh, transfer the risk to a third party. It can be uh, using insurance or uh, subcontracting uh, as very common um, solutions in here. Recap, we talked about uh, uh, ISO 31000, which is risk management standard with um, its uh, uh, procedural uh, steps to uh, manage the risks. Thank you to, uh, for your attention. Looking forward to our uh, uh, future discussions about similar topics.